All right, just refresh your screen, Mace. Go to seat four. Yeah, and refresh down below. It'll come up. <laughs> I'm usually the technolo technologically. There it is. Savvy person in the family. All right. <laughs> so do I got a good audio check? I have no idea. Go to the comments. Make it big and go to your comments. And then sweep left or right. Oops, here we go. Um, so Marianne and, and, and Mary are watching. All right, can they, Marianne and Mary, can you guys hear us? Can you hear us? Can you give us a thumbs up if you can? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Well, that's good. So good evening. It's just after eight o'clock. I'm Chris Lukasevich, Republican candidate for Carbon County Commissioner, your host for Carbon Matters live streaming. And I'm joined this evening, as like every evening, uh, by my wife, Maggie. And over about the next 45 minutes, we're going to be discussing the issues that matter most to the residents of Carbon County. And really, we're focused on the most significant events of the last two weeks. And the purpose of this conversation with you is threefold. Uh, first and foremost, it is, in, it is to introduce myself to you so you better understand my vision and eventually where I would like to carry the county to. Uh, it is about having an informed conversation with each and every one of you or informed chat and similarly helping us all be better educated in the realm of the issues that are so important to us so we are um, able to do a better job when we go to the ballot box on 21 May and then once again on 5 November. As always the sponsor of Carbon Matters live streaming is Cafe Ruiz from Boquete in Panama, but you can order it from uh, Ruiz Coffee USA. That's R-U-I-Z, the word coffee USA. So thanks to Leah Peck for being the official sponsor of not only uh, Carbon Matters, but also the principal provider of coffee for C4, the political committee, Chris, for Carbon County Commissioner. So we're going to go ahead and get started. As always, we like to start uh, kind of on the light side and then move into the heavier topics. I would like to mention up front that I did extend an offer to Liberty Power. Um, the project manager and his team at Liberty Power, they're responsible for the planned project up on the Broad Mountain. And equally so, I extended an invitation to both organizations opposing wind turbines in their respective areas. So the folks out in Penn Forest Township, Toa Mensing, that area, and then the group uh, say no to wind turbines in Carbon County, which is really a, a Packer Township uh, focused uh, project, which Liberty Power uh, is leading up. Again, had no takers on that. I didn't necessarily expect there would be, but I did wanna offer the opportunity to all three of those organizations to have a conversation with us, with you this evening. If you're just tuning in, well, thank you for joining us on Carbon Matters live streaming. And tonight, uh, we are gonna try to do a little phone-in opportunity. And the first person who does call in once we open up the lines, will get a free C4 mug. And that first cup of coffee is on me at C4 headquarters right on the 1200 block of Center Street in Jim Thorpe. So look forward to the opportunity to call 570-503-6780. And I did forward that number to Maggie's phone, so we'll see if that works, but that is my actual number, and that's the one I provide to everyone when they wanna reach out and have a conversation with me, Chris Lukasiewicz, Republican candidate for Carbon County Commission. So let's go ahead and get started. We have a comment. All right, good. From Eamon. Yeah, Eamon, thank you for joining us. Yes, he says, why is the county so hell-bent to build by the church? Why not build an existing lot? It appears, Eamon, that the uh, three commissioners made a, a decision uh, without 
consultation of the equity holders, the stakeholders. Uh, they determined it was in the best interest of the employees and, and the court system uh, to put it in that location. I think most of us understand, and we're going to get into this a little bit deeper because there is a couple articles on that, uh, that at the end of the day, there were other options, as you're al alluding to, there were other options out there uh, to include behind the annex, uh, potentially in, in the parking lot, and then even others within Jim Thorpe itself. So there was a lot of other options. I always have a challenge because I believe, you know, county government tends to throw money at problems, and that is they simply hire a consultant to get them the answers they want in lieu of forming working groups from the good, intelligent, highly qualified people that often work in our county government. This seems to be the one time where the commissioners uh, came up with this idea all on their own. And I think that's what's putting us in the position today, because we have not been able to get any information on any formal analysis that was done even by a consulting group uh, when it pertains to the specific locations and the pros and cons of it being placed, uh, I believe it's actually 44 Susquehanna Street, obviously where the, the old archives building was and current maintenance building that is uh, uh, actually transitioning up under the bridge. And we're gonna talk more about that in a few minutes. So it was good uh, at last week's commissioner meeting. Uh, be aware there was no commissioner meeting this week because of uh, the, the, the funeral and, and burial of, of Emmett McCall. Uh, the recorder of deeds. Uh, but this past week, last week, we did recognize 4-H uh, at the commissioner's meeting. And you'll see a little bit later in the year also, they'll be flying the 4-H flag uh, for a week down at the courthouse. So a great program, 4-H, developing leadership, responsibility in youth. It's like FHA, like Boy Scouts, all those great organizations that help develop uh, skills in youth, help individuals mature in many ways to include uh, discipline, uh, civics, uh, being a responsible citizen and a responsible person. So uh, again, hats off to the folks in 4-H who are so committed uh, to their work and farming, which is so critical uh, to our nation. All right. So then on, and I did want to bring up, again, the passing of Emmett McCall. I believe everyone is pretty well aware of Emmett McCall. Uh, almost two decades, if I recall, working in county government, but many years tied to Irish organizations uh, in the area. Uh, very, very good public servant. I've only ever heard positive things about Emmett McCall and, and the people in, in his office. So hats off. First and foremost to his office and condolences though uh, to Emmett, his family and the people he, he has worked with uh, for these many years and those of us who've had the pleasure or opportunity to be served by him or know him. So uh, rest in peace, RIP, Emmett McCall. Our deepest sympathies too. Yep, that's great. And again, if you're just joining us, this is Carbon Matters live streaming. I'm Chris Lukasevich, Republican candidate for Carbon County Commissioner, and I'm joined by my wife, Maggie, as always. Keep in mind, we're here being sponsored by Cafe Ruiz, Ryan Ruiz Coffee USA, finest coffee coming out of Panama in the uh, coffee growing region of Boquete. That I will tell you, that coffee growing region was first cultivated by the great grandfather of Maggie Lukasevich, Papa Lalo. So again, so I don't want to say this is the, this is great coffee. That's what I'll say. Let's leave it at that. But Leah Peck and David Peck up in Strongsville, Ohio. Again, thank you so much for providing the coffee for C4 and for sponsoring this show. Uh, Maggie and actually my son Taylor are both uh, volunteers for AARP tax preparation. Maggie, this is your fourth year? Fourth year. Right, every year since you've come back. Well, I went down to visit her in uh, the Heighton Senior Center and had the opportunity uh, to meet a gentleman who I mentioned just two weeks ago before, a uh, World War II veteran, Clarence Smoyer. And he was uh, highlighted by combat cameramen in World War II during a confrontation, a hostile action uh, in Cologne, 
Germany and his story of his tank uh, spearhead by Adam Makos. What the reason I bring up Clarence, uh, Clarence is because while Maggie was doing tax prep, I went up and talked to a couple people who were just sitting here. I noticed a gentleman with a, a veteran's hat on, and indeed it was Clarence Moyer. And had about 15 or 20 minutes to uh, speak uh, to Clarence and folks he was sitting with. There he is there on a Sherman tank. Uh, so hats off to Clarence. I believe he's about 95 years old. Um, and that's a great story, Spearhead. Uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was actually uh, doing some campaign work in Lehighton around 11th Street. And I actually found the individual who was the advocate for getting the story of Clarence published. And they are now working on finding someone actually to produce a movie uh, based on the book Spearhead, which highlights the tank crew. Now, if you remember, there was a tank movie that came out a couple of years ago. Glorious Bastards. No, no, oh, no, no. Sorry. Remember, it was, Sorry. It was just <laughs> about the tank crew. And that at that... No, it was not, actually. Oh, okay. But it may have been called Tank or something. If anyone knows, please go ahead and yeah, uh, uh, chat that in. Obviously, I'm thinking of a different, or a different movie. Yeah, it was just about the tank. It was with, with Brad, Brad Pitt. Pitt. With Brad Pitt. That's Inglorious Bastards. I don't think so. Uh, we can get Taylor up here and he can tell you. All right. What about that little... Oh. Thing, Siri thing or something also. But hey, but nonetheless, so they are looking at making this into a movie. During that, a few years ago though, they looked at it, but no one would pick up the story because they already had one tank movie and Hollywood did think another tank movie would sell. And that's kind of funny because Hollywood tends to copycat all the time. Once you see one genre, you keep having more. All right. So let's go ahead and move into something a little bit heavier here. Um, two weeks ago, we had Bing Wong, the health journalist for The Morning Call, joined by Jarrett Soto of Lansford, the President yeah. Council. Maybe not, you're right. What was the name of it? No, I'm, I, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You get to it. Okay. All right. So Lansford sees a big decline in property values. Uh, and I would argue that's a harbinger of, of bad things to come. Uh, Lansford is already challenged. Maggie, do we have a comment there? Uh, uh, Christian, Christian Bartulovich. I, th I think it was called Fury. Yeah. Fury. You yes, got yes, it, Christian. Fury. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, and Christian, I, I just want to mention that uh, yeah. uh, Christian Bartulovich will be joining us. Uh, in two weeks, two weeks. Uh, from today, he'll be here. We've also invited another candidate for a supervisor position uh, in one of the Carbon County municipalities. Uh, but our desire is in two weeks to have Christian Bartulovich plus one other uh, candidate supervisor to join us. We'll have them discuss the issues specific to their municipalities, and then we'll try to do that Venn diagram and see where communities are having similar problems or not, uh, because we do have a council of governments here in Carbon County where many of the municipalities are, are already working together for things like uh, buying common pieces of equipment, street sweepers, leaf suckers, or whatever those uh, vehicles are called. So again, it'll be interesting uh, to have Christian join us with a fellow candidate for a supervisor position. So Lansford sees a big decrease in property values. Uh, the concern of course is when you have a decrease in property values, governments see a necessity to raise millage rates. You raise millage rates, that continues that vicious cycle. And you know we have great concern for the Panther Valley School District. Uh, it is in pretty dire situation. I mean, it's not on its death now, uh, but you know, there's we're here in maybe three to five years if we don't see some type of recovery of uh, the property values. Uh, it seems like up in the Panther Valley School District, we're not getting the best bang for our buck. And those Lansford, Nesquahoning, Summit Hill, plus just across the line in Coldale, they they clearly have you know the the highest property taxes assessed by the school districts in all Carbon County. Uh, so very challenging uh, for the folks up in, in Lansford. I would also keep uh, in mind, we're gonna talk about it in a few minutes, 
uh, the wind turbines. Uh, within a couple miles, within view of wind turbines, property values do decrease. Uh, Summit Hill is less than two and three quarter miles uh, from the 21, 665 foot wind turbines planned for the Broad Mountain. So it would be reasonable to expect that property values could be further depressed if those wind turbines go up. But again, that's something we're going to have to continue to track and look at as Packer Township uh, makes decisions or has to uh, go ahead and confront that, that issue. And there is a pretty strong mo movement opposed to the wind turbines up there. And we will talk more about that. Wow. So Eamon brought it up first. So thanks, Eamon. But there it is. Carbon seeks $12 million for projects. So three years ago in 2016, uh, the county took out $7.75 million in long-term debt. Now we have another 12 million. That puts us almost to 20 million, plus there was some residual. So we're up to about the equivalent of, under this current regime, uh, triumvirate of the three up there, of about $24 million in long-term debt. That's the equivalent of a 16 mil increase and that's what we call smoke and mirrors. So instead of telling us the taxpayers that we're gonna increase uh, your mill rate by 18, by 18 points, instead they just take out long-term debt. So not only us, but our children and grandchildren uh, will have to pay uh, for projects. Some of them are needs, but things like 110 space parking garage are actually just wants. Uh, so that's something we have to be continued to be concerned with. Now, this is primarily go going to go towards offsetting the cost of the new facility, uh, two-level parking garage, and the needed, to some degree, added office space for the courts down on Susquehanna Street. And in regards to that, you know, there is an opposition group that has formed uh, SOS, Save Our Sanctuaries, City and Town, and they are focused on, not Church and Town, church and town excuse me, yes, yeah, save, save Our Sanctuaries, Church and Town, and they are really focused on the concern or issues uh, that would impact, that is the construction would impact in regards to historic uh, St. Mark's Church, not only the structure itself, the Tiffany Glass, and other invaluable objects, priceless. Uh, uh, projects there. And then uh, tomorrow, Saturday night, starting at seven o'clock, Mock Chunk Ballroom, Good Vibrations Dance, uh, great Jim Thorpe DJ, Dave Gasker is gonna be yeah. spinning the records or something. We're gonna be doing Beach Boys kind of music. Uh, uh, we were saying uh, beach attire encouraged, but that means more like Aloha shirts, that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> no bikinis. Right. Although I, well, it's not I heard restricted. something. Uh, what's that? It's not restricted. That. No, but it's, if you it's want beach to, attire. you can. Right. Um, I, I've heard that someone's going to be wearing coconut top and a and grass skirt, so right. there you go. Yeah, so that's again, that's Saturday night, 7 o'clock, Mock Chunk Ballroom. Um, there's going to be a 50-50. Yep. There's going to be a, a we have a hundred dollars and a hundred dollar value in lottery board, um, which could be thousands. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a raffle of um, uh, one of the the wood carved eagles from a stump mm -hmm. from the uh, winter fest that the guy did with the chainsaw is going to be raffled off. And um, there's yep. going to be one more. I can't okay. remember what it's But, I words. mean, they are going to have alcoholic drinks, so yeah. it is well, for, right? One, <laughs> one alcoholic drink. <laughs> one type. It's the Malibu Bay Breeze. I thought there was beer. Oh, yeah. Well, you're right. You're That's right. an alcoholic I drink. Never think of that yeah. Before. All right. But, yeah, but one right. mixed drink. Yeah, one and mixed one beer. drink, and then they're, they're going to have beers and sodas. And sodas. Water. Yeah. yeah. So we have and well over. Food yep. is included. Yep. And we have well over 100 food. people who said are interested and in, are yeah, coming. And so, but we'd like to max out the capacity yes, of the mock chunk um, ballroom. There's 200 uh, person capacity. We really need people to come out so that we can add to the legal fund. Because mm -hmm. right now, are you, 
You want to mention that? Well, well yeah, and, and, and anyone can chime in. And if someone wants to call in, we'd love to give it a chance. Like if Mary Teresa wants to come in for a minute or two or someone else, just make a comment. 570-503-6780. We just saw the injunctions against two in, uh, injunctions that were filed against the borough of, of Jim Thorpe, and that was in the paper uh, just a, a couple nights ago. Uh, so again, don't hesitate to call 570-503-6780. Eamon wants a clarification. Wind turbines, are they talking on the Broad Mountain? Yes, the Broad yes. Mountain on Nesquahoning property. Yep. That would be 21 of them, 665 feet high. There was an ordinance signed by Tommy Gerhardt Jr., now Commissioner Tommy Gerhardt, when he was a Packer Township Supervisor in 2008. It was probably one of the weakest wind ordinances in the United States of America. That's my description of it from reading it. Uh, it was basically, you know, giving a wide open, opening the doors for wind turbine farms uh, within Packer Township. And matter of fact, you know, that property that it's all the turbines is actually going on to a Kovach property, all 21. So uh, John Kovach or the trust the Kovac Trust will be the primary private beneficiary, probably will reap the most financial reward from this project, of course, outside of Liberty Power and Algonquin, who they're, do, they're working on. But it's interesting because I mentioned it a few weeks ago that, you know, there's a connection. You know, Tommy Gerhardt is pro-turbine. He wrote uh, or had the turbine ordinance for Packer drafted in 2008. Again, one of the weakest ones that I've ever read. I've only read a handful, but they're definitely much, much more stricter. Uh, he himself had a, an article or some comments that were written uh, in a 2008 article where he clearly stated he welcomed turbines. He didn't care if they were 80 feet or more. He wanted them in Packer Township. And guess what, Tommy Gerhardt? You're getting them because there's nothing, it's almost inevitable based upon the current ordinance. And, you know, it's a, a fight worth fighting, but it's going to be extremely challenging. I just want to show you this. I uh, review all the financial filings of all candidates because I was trying to develop and continue to develop a budget for my own campaign. So I was down there getting the end of year filings there so you see this is there there's a filing from the re-elect tom gerhardt that's from this year right and as i talked about pay to play in carbon county you can see there john and sharon kovac twenty five hundred dollar contribution to dom tommy gerhardt so guess who isn't opposed to wind turbines right yet in a public forum Three witnesses uh, would have been a week or Sunday, right? It would have been a week ago last Sunday. Uh, Tommy Gerhardt, according to three witnesses, was telling individuals not only he, but including the commissioners, were opposed to turbines. Now, in last week's public session of the Board of Commissioners, when I asked that question, Wayne Notstein said, you know, they were, they, they really had no position. Uh, but Tommy Gerhardt himself would not answer the question of what his position on, nor would he admit uh, to the fact that he took $2,500 uh, from John and Sharon Kovach on 21 December of this past year. Is it coincidence that all of a sudden uh, the turbine issue pops up and you know there's a gift of $2,500 four days before Christmas? Now people say, well, that doesn't go into his pocket. No, but if you contributed 2500 to my campaign, that's $2,500 I don't have to take out of my savings or retirement. Uh, keep in mind also, Susie Gerhardt, the wife of Tommy Gerhardt, is a Packer Township supervisor. So again, you know, follow the money, as folks say. I'm answering Eamon. Um, he, uh, okay, sorry, let me just... Yes, so it's more on Kovach property, it's not on state game lands. Well, none of it is on state game lands. It's all on Kovach, 
and it's um, there are a couple other um, entities that have right of ways, like for for access to yeah yeah. The, um, to Mr. Postapuck and Hazelton Electric are kind of the access. There was originally going to be one of the turbines on Hazelton Electric LLC property. However, as they redid or reshaped the plan, it all moved on to Kovach property. Now, keep in mind that this Kovach property is called, I believe it's called an HCA. If you look at the Stain Land regulations, and I posted a map previously, it's Hunter Cooperative Stat Access. So um, the Kovaches or the trust or back then Sunny Kovach. It's land that adjoins a state game land that a private person allows hunters to access. And so that's where this is being built, in, on, uh, partially on that HCA. Now, the Kovaches had said, and so had Liberty Power in their public hearings, or public, let me say, briefing, that that area will remain open uh, to, to hunting up there on, on, on the Broad Mountain. And again, if you want to give us a call, 570-503-6780. Get that C4 mug and that first cup of coffee. Yeah. All right. Well, a couple weeks ago, we saw Mr. Bennett down in Lehighton, Lehighton area on 443 having some challenges. Uh, PennDOT wanted to declare eminent domain uh, on quite a few properties, really going from what we refer to as Carbon Plaza, uh, all the way down 443 as they're doing a widening project all the way to the Thomas J. McCall Bridge. Uh, so they want to put in a third lane, a turning lane to increase the flow of traffic. It seems like uh, Mr. Bennett's appeal to the Borough of Lehighton and to PennDOT has not been successful. And PennDOT has filed a plan to take that land. It's really, I believe it was for stormwater management stormwater primarily management. along the roads. And unfortunately, it's one of the prime real estate locations for uh, a business that would actually bring jobs to the area, but instead it's going to just be for stormwater. Yeah, region. because th those jobs at Taco Bell are great. Right. Well, so that's what I mean. I right. kind of... I, well, I, no, if it was like a Target, like Jane said. Before, yeah, right. Yeah. That would be great. That yeah. would give a lot yeah, of Yeah, but these jobs. are pretty... Uh, the parcels aren't that big, but... The parcel's big enough for Target. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And it already has a, a traffic light and a, a turn in, a driver yeah. going into it, so right. it would be perfect. Yeah. So again, though, definitely hate to see government taking any property uh, oh, away okay. from right. from anyone. Again, we're always trying to balance economic development with individual rights and stuff like that, and that's a tough, a tough, tough call. And that's why you see. Uh, the Penny's Pipeline, why so many people, people were concerned, are, because yeah. that's going to go through uh, uh, private land uh, and property. Interesting, the Carbon County Commissioners were opposed to the Penny's Pipeline. <laughs> huh. They weren't opposed and had voiced no opposition to the Penn Forest Turbines, nor have they voiced any opposition to the turbines up on Packer Township. Now, matter of fact, if we go back to 2015, both Wayne and Tommy took money from the Kovaches. Huh, that's 500 bucks, de minimis, which means may not be real significant. So some things, while not illegal, could be immoral or unethical. So just keep that in mind. And again, that was 2015, the $500 to Wayne and Tommy, but then you had the 21 December, $2,500 to Tommy. Merry Christmas, Tommy Gerhardt and the Gerhardt family. Oh, we did have a brief. Oh, yeah. Damon said, uh, eminent domain is so wrong. Carbon County robbed the Smith family for the Penn Kidder School. Mm. Uh, Eamon, what Smith? Was that Edgar Smith? Was that James Smith? What's, what Smith? There's a few different Smiths out there. You just, as a matter of fact, condolences to, <laughs> to my classmate, uh, Todd Smith, whose father, Edgar, has just passed away. That obituary was in the paper within the last couple days. Right. So Todd, uh, I believe he's married to a snur, if I recall correctly. I may be uh, not spot on that. Again, uh, condolences to you. I did drive out there to see if you were in the, the hardware store today, later this afternoon, but it was closed. It's been closed. Okay, all right. So uh, hearts and prayers out to you. Yeah, he hasn't responded yet. So oh, we'll okay. All right. So uh, there was a 
the head of workforce in Carbon County was at the commissioner's meeting. And we did see that, uh, of uh, I believe the number was actually downgraded to about 170 some. Bob Smith. Oh, Bob Smith. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's a big loss. Yeah, Christian's a big loss for Penn Forest Township. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Marianne, we won't bring up that person. <laughs> she mentioned, uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, so again, if you're just joining us, welcome. This is yes. Chris Lukasevich, Republican Super candidate good. for Carbon County Commissioner. Uh, and you're watching Carbon Matters live streaming edition. We're trying to keep it down to about 45 minutes because taking a break from guests, but in two weeks from now, Christian Bartulovich, uh, candidate supervisor for Penn Forest Township will be joining us. Uh, plus, we've extended an invitation uh, to another township supervisor. If anyone is out there uh, who is a candidate for a supervisor position, uh, you can feel free to give me a call at 570-503-6780. We'll try to get you on in two weeks or in a future edition of, of Carbon Matters. Or you can email me at chris at c4commissioner.org also. So again, talking about the New England Motor Freight, had about 142 uh, workers who did file for unemployment. Now the numbers of unemployed, it was originally looked like there were about 200 laid off. They downgraded those numbers to the 170s. There are still a few people who are still out there working. I suspect they're kind of in the shutdown process out there. Um, there were indications or rumors that uh, many truck, other truck companies local, and I'm talking Lehigh Valley, had been reaching out uh, uh, to some individuals who were employed at New England Motor Freight. Again, though, you know, the convenience of driving five or 10 minutes to work versus driving 50 minutes down to the Lehigh Valley, which according to the Census Bureau, American Community Survey, Carbon County residents, excuse me, Carbon County workers have the longest average commute of all 67 counties. As unbelievable as it says, or as they say, I think it was around 30 to 31 minutes. Again, average commute. Uh, about just a couple percent are doing super commutes that 90 minutes or longer. So those folks probably living out in Penn Forest, Kidder Township, doing that commute into New York City yeah. uh, and things of that nature. Um, I've actually gotten some New England freight people coming in to get their taxes done and really heightened. Mm. It's a very sad thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. So there was an announcement that some opioid treatment bills are in hearing. Uh, nothing approved, but they are moving forward. And I don't know if uh, uh, Cindy is with us tonight, but she tends to be very well in tune to this particular topic and she has a great Facebook page where issues in regards to abuse of drugs, opioid uh, problems are, are addressed regularly. So I think one of the critical things is uh, that coming out of these bills are trying to ensure there's that warm handoff so that individuals when they come out of perhaps some type of facility they're not just put out on the street uh, but there's actually someone there for them to say, hey, here are your next steps. Uh, here is how we're going to help you. And again, it's right as they're being released and it isn't, well, you know, go, go see someone a week from now. There's what they call a warm handoff. But, so I think that's really positive. Okay, what else? Is there another or two bills associated with that? Oh, yeah. yep. The other was discussed what provide for detoxification addiction treatment bed registry, right? So that's no, those individuals are ha having a challenge and addressing those challenges with them. So a little bit of movement there. And there's the board reviews the wind farm. So what had happened uh, last Thursday, just prior to that, the Packer Township supervisor sent a letter uh, to the Board of Commissioners asking for their assistance. Uh, no response from the Board of Commissioners. Um, Carbon County Commissioners did not go on the record either in support or against a proposed wind farm in Packer Township. 
I really like, though, that last paragraph. The commissioners, following questioning by commissioner candidate Chris Lukasevich, who has made it known at previous commissioner's meeting that he opposes the project, took no action regarding the request. So again, I don't expect Tommy and Wayne to take any action. But what I can understand, Bill O'Gorick is the lame duck, right? He's not running for office. How can he in the Democratic Party not come out, come out and vocally support. opposed to the yeah. turbine? He is so opposed to the Penn East pipeline. He put his name on that same resolution right. proclamation saying that. So I can't understand why Bill O'Gorick would not come out against this. He so strongly opposed the Penn East pipeline. Now we do know that Chrisman's are strong, strong Republicans. I don't know if, or excuse me, Democrats. The Chrisman's are strong, strong Democrats. So I don't know. That's why he supported that and not supporting uh, other matters that are arguably just as significant as it comes to impact on our environment and natural beauty. Eamon's asking, why do you oppose the project? It'd be a good time to, to well, bring it up. Eamon, thanks for the question. I oppose wind turbines for two reasons locally in these two particular projects. I have to clarify that. One, they destroy the viewscape, right? We grew up in Switzerland of America, and I truly believe that our ridge lines are a draw to tourism. It, it was a draw for me to come back to Carbon County. So one, they destroyed the viewscape, those 665 foot guardians of the valley, as some refer to them as, you know? But just as importantly and concerning to me is that the facts are within view, property values are depressed. And when property values are depressed, governments have to increase millage rates in order to compensate for the reduction in tax revenue. So for those two reasons, in these two particular cases, I'm opposed to them. Now, I will tell you from a national security perspective and the need for U.S. American, U.S. or American energy independence, I'm for alternative fuels. Hydro, water, wind, solar, nuclear, bring it all on. Just frank, thermal, yeah, another, right? But the fact is, it's where you put it that concerns me. Okay, I'll get into it. Not my backyard for wind turbines. Now, solar, absolutely. We have one of the, the largest solar farms east of Las Vegas, Nevada, right here in Nesquahoning. If you run up towards Lake Hato, uh, in the autumn, you can see it. <coughs> Excuse me. I would say uh, if you go on to Google Earth, you could definitely see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to it. Now, I think there are some less than strong arguments out there. Uh, I know one that keeps coming up are the amount of birds that wind turbines or kill bats, or, or bats. bats. I will tell you, and the science is clear, millions of more birds are killed by your windshield than are ever going to be killed by wind turbine blades. So I, I would say if we want to take the wind turbine blades down, we might as well take our windshields off our cars also. I think they say too the bats are drawn to, there's something about the, the it, sonic. It may be, yeah. it may be. And, and bats are critical to help they keep the test population. The yep. So again, if I do recall, I'm the only candidate or actual that uh, has ever spoken up about up it. Up about it. And not only have I spoken, I did carry a resolution to the Carbon County Commissioners yep. and the three signatory communities of the Middle Carbon C County Comprehensive Plan. And kudos to Jim Thorpe for signing a resolution demonstrating moral support for their fellow signatory to the Middle Carbon County Comprehensive Plan of Penn Forest Township. And truly, they didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to provide money. They didn't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. It was just for moral support saying, yep. we stand behind the, the people of Penn Forest, um, the residents of Penn Forest. They couldn't even do that. Yeah, that, that was sad. And again, I still don't understand their reasoning, nor have they ever stated their reasoning. An interesting I, um, Saturday Times News. If you're not a regular Times News reader, I'm going to ask you to pick up the Saturday Times News. As a matter of fact, if you pick it up and you're not a regular reader, you bring that newspaper to me when you're done reading it, I'll reimburse whatever it costs you to buy it. Uh, Amy's 
saying, so what is the income from solar versus cost on that farm, the wind turbine farm? I don't know. We would not have any idea. Yeah. Idea, but but we do know that for solar fields like that, um, the the solar power is converted into credits, and then those credits go towards providing. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, that's one way to do it. You, you sell it to like PPL. PPL gives your credit. Yeah. So again, I'm telling you on this topic. Saturday Times News. Read the insert. So when you pick up your newspaper. If there's not a rubber band around it, an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper is going to drop out of it. And that eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper is going to look very much like that. Now I can't let it too close, or you'll be able to read it at this time, right? And then it's going to be on there. There's Buy lot. that Times News. Yeah, a lot, lot to read, yeah, and it's not there. the Reader's Digest version. That's a Chris yeah. Lukasiewicz version. Right. There's all a right? lot there, but it's all worth worthwhile um, uh, reading. Yeah. Worthy yep. time, time investment, 10 minutes of your time. Yep, so please read that. And again, for those of you who aren't subscribers of the hard copy, you bring me that newspaper, I'll even reimburse you for that because I think it's so important. Eamon thinks he's being a pet. You're not being a pet. No, nope, so that's good. You're so Are grateful you? for, your, for your questions yep. and for asking all those things because that's what brings out even more responses from Chris than you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Right, so. yeah. So thank yeah. you for that, Eamon. Yep. Very grateful. So talking, you know, 70 acres is really the whole Packard and Yards complex. And Not I think, well, right. oh. that's, that's my job to bring oh. up that, that article. <laughs> wow. I'll, wow. I'll turn over the mic. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think I actually can turn it so it just hears me. Oh. Like you oh, switch really? that button. Yeah, good. it's done. That would be great. So, right. so 70 acres is a complex, and I know you guys have lived through the fiasco that has been the Packarding Yard failed attempt to, let me say, monetize uh, that. But interesting, I've been spending a lot of time you know, talking to people lately, and we come up and see, without transparency, whoever knew before March 9th, Saturday, that Carbon was giving 26 acres of that Packardin complex to Lee Heighton. Now Yay. I'm giving. Now, and that's the problem I'm hearing from folks. We've lost time, money, and effort on Packardin Yards, and the commissioners, and I'm saying one in particular, understanding it's a political election year, is given 26 acres to his hometown. That's a fact. Giving 26 acres, it's an election year, giving it to his hometown. And who is he in cahoots to make that happen? Of course, that's with Tommy. Sorry to be so negative, and, but again, the facts are there. It's clear. So, again, is it okay to give those 26 acres away? There's no current development plan for those 26 acres. Uh, but I do believe Lee Height might be able to actually do something with it. Oh, they are. They, they have plans. Well, they have. They, they're talking about access to Dunbar Beach. That that is the plan as far as we go. But I think people can already access it. You go by the beverage store under the railroad tracks, and you're on Dunbar Beach. I'm just saying. Again, though, best of Lee Heighton for trying to do it. If I was Lee Heighton, I was given 26 acres, as long as it isn't the 26 polluted acres, contaminated acres. I would probably take it too. Let's hope, for, let's hope when they did that cleanup and remediated the Packard and Yards that indeed it was uh, contaminant free or, or met the minimal standards of DEP. But any opinions on that? Is it Should we have given 26 acres away or should have been there some type of expectation of revenue generation for the county to reimburse for the time effort put into that? But again, for those remaining acres that are there, 40 some acres again read saturday's times news okay so um ed glasses yeah okay yeah yeah chris how badly do you believe we need to lean on alternative sources of energy i guess um this can be viewed as rhetorical but i am still interested in hearing chris's reply secondly if any what other options other than wind do you favor in the county and i think second question first I favor solar, solar because I, I think it has a lower visual impact and we have significant land in Carbon County 
that has been or is still contaminated and has li little other viable uses. Packard in yards might be an example. Now I know there's been mediation, remediation that has done there, but I don't know if I'd want to convert that into a park where our children are playing long hours. It's gonna to be tough enough, you know, again, kids playing there, well, you're gonna to have to bus them in, you're gonna to have to car them in, but they could be playing fields down there. But I don't know if we wanna uh, subject the kids to that. And I also think once you start turning that soil over and over again, all that from the, the train yards down there is going to come back and be brought up to the surface. That which hasn't already leached into the water or the Lehigh River. So, you know, again, my point first and foremost, I, I'm a big proponent of solar, solar, mostly in areas which have little other use. Now, think about this down at the zinc plant where they're bringing in the, the fill from New York and New Jersey. If that's right. never able to be developed, into industrial or some type of uh, plant space, might that not be another option for solar? Now, my thought on solar is oh, you right. create the solar energy, you sell it back or provide it to PPNL. PPNL provides the municipality with the credits to offset their own utilities. Saturday, Times News, buy it. Buy it. And if, Read the answer. Yeah, and I will. I'll, I will be posting the copies of the insert on social media. You should go ahead and say whatever. Uh, no, 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 no it's all in the plan. You know, and there's another part to that. I, I'm a big, uh, Ed, I'm a big proponent of alternative energies. As if you didn't already uh, hear, and it's all about national security, right? Last thing I want to be is myself, my sons, my, do my daughter, children's cousins, your sons or daughters having to go over the Middle East to fight for oil. So right. again, yeah. develop it here domestically yeah. uh, in the U.S., always trying to balance our natural environment with necessary development. All right, we're winding down for about, uh, we're right, uh, we're a little running up. Final list of candidates. Okay. Ed, if, if that's, if that answers your question, yeah. If let it's us not, know with a thumbs up. If it didn't, um, I'll readdress it. He'll readdress it. Yeah. Yep. In the meantime, I'll keep going. So I did post. Went down to the Bureau of Elections because the Times News was spotty. They gave final list of candidates for carbon offices as released, and and you can see, it's not. Maybe that's I don't know 30, 35 candidates. Well, then I go down to the Bureau of Elections. Let me see here. Okay, there's one page of about 24. <laughs> there's two pages, and this goes on for six pages of candidates. So I don't know where the Times News gives these, you know, small portion list when there's actually six pages of candidates from school districts, supervisors, commissioners, and things of that nature. So if if you are interested in anyone who is running for county or municipal office. Uh, in Carbon County, that is on C4 Commissioner uh, Facebook page that's been uh, posted there. Ed Thumbstuck. Okay, thanks Ed, and thank you for joining us. And again, you are watching S Carbon Matters live streaming. I'm Christopher Savage, Republican candidate for Carbon County Commissioner. I'm joined by my wife, Maggie. And again, I want to remind everyone as we're winding down here over the next few minutes that we'll be joined in two weeks by Christian Bartulovich. Uh, candidate supervisor for Penn Forest Township for the six-year position. This is Carbon Matters live streaming and we're sponsored by uh, Ruiz Coffee USA coming out of Boquete, Cafe Ruiz as we refer to it in Spanish, uh, coming out of Boquete, Panama, but that's actually brought in by Leah Peck in Strongville, Ohio, and she sends that all over the United States. All right, final list of candidates. Oh, there was Carbon OK's okay. Sheriff's Union. Yeah. Amy asked, what's the efficiency of current solar panels? I know their efficiency wasn't great overall. I cover 15% of a panel, lose eight, loses 80% of yeah. its efficiency. Yeah, I think that's a great, I'd love to have Walt come down. Oh, yeah. Because Walt, Walt. from WB Electric, he's really big into solar. solar. Uh, to find that because we were actually discussing it potentially for a little project that we had yeah. never took the next step but I know he's a subject matter expert yeah. I do know 
the the solar cells have improved greatly, but I don't know the technical aspects of it. And it's interesting because I've been in, in contact with a couple solar centric people, I like to refer to them lately. <laughs> and, all, and I do know that I think we, we're probably still pulling in too many solar panels from China. So hopefully the president's work there is gonna make a change to that. Talking about the president, anyone here this Melania person? I got this letter in the mail, M Melania. So I got this letter in the mail, and I haven't opened it yet. I don't know if I'm someone special or not, but Melania Trump wrote me, and I was worried that there was going to be, like, perfume on it or something, yeah. but there's not. So you know what? I'm going to open this letter live <laughs> uh, uh, just because I'm so curious to what it is. Now, I've been, like, holding on to this for three days, waiting for this particular moment. So here it is, 2C4 from Melania Trump. I don't know if this is... Her or the president getting ready to endorse me uh, for Carbon County Commissioner. I won't be jealous, I promise. Huh. Even though well. the movie star has it. What? Presidential Pledge of Support. Oh. Oh, that's to the president, not to me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, let's see. Wow. From the moment my husband Donald placed his hand on the Bible and took the oath of office. He has worked nonstop to deliver on his promise to make America great again. Uh, wow, I'm, I look forward to tell, Chris, I look forward to telling Donald that you, C4, are standing with us as he moves forward in his commitment to make America great again. Please let me hear from you soon. Huh, just sign a pledge. Oh, and then contribute some money. I, I think I'll tell Donald that I'll take care of my own campaign first, and, and then we'll see where we go from there. But Melania, if you're watching, I want to thank you so much there at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue for writing personally and individually to me, Chris Lukasevich, Republican candidate for Carbon County Commissioner. I am so impressed and just so exuberant about the fact that Melania decided to write me C4. Oh, incredible. What's All right. Two more to go here. Oh, borough voters will elect mayor and council members. No one is running for office for two empty borough seats, vacant borough seats in Perryville. There you go. That's disappointing. Wow. That is so disappointing. So Perryville is going to have two vacant seats. So for those in Jim Thorpe, uh, there will be three people elected to four-year terms. And we have running on the Democratic side, Jay Miller, Robert Schanninger, Kyle Sheckler, and Michael Yatestead. The Democrats will face Republican John My McGuire in November. Huh. Three of the four will be elected. All right, anything else? Beaver Meadows. All right, there. Now, that Perryville one is the one that really stuck up to me. Yeah, stuck yep. out. Oh, stuck up. Yeah, stuck, stuck out. Up, huh? Oh, two more. So, um, kudos to uh, Kathy McGuire, right? The wife of Pete McGuire. I think uh, quite a few of the folks uh, know Kathy. She works down in, uh, it would be the tax assessment office, right? Or down there by, uh, yep. Yeah. yeah, and she was in the clerk of courts. So, uh, Kathy McGuire announces her candidacy for Carbon County Clerk of Courts. So, we have now her and Fran Heaney, both from Jim Thorpe, uh, running for the same position. I did see, you know, Bob Crancy, the controllers, retiring. I think very highly of Bob personally. I see uh, Tom McCall, the third from Summit Hill, is actually running on the Democratic side uh, to fill Bob Crancy's position. And on the Republican side, we have a it's candidate, not, Mike Severchek. Yes, okay. uh, who did a little bit, I think, with Lansford Alive and stuff like that, all right? So we do have some candidates for there. So if you're joining us at this late moment, you are listening to C4 uh, at Carbon Matters live stream. I'm Chris Lukasevich. A couple highlights I wanna make. Um, this Saturday, Good Vibrations Dance down at Mock Chunk, Mock Chunk Ballroom, Ballroom starting at seven o'clock. $15 in advance if you call St. Mark's, right? Yeah. 
and $20 at the, at the door. So it's a will call, but you need to call down, reserve your ticket, right. and then it'd be 15 or you show up and then it's a $20 donation that supports a legal fund to help preserve the structural integrity and irreplaceable elements of St. Mark. So it's going to be a fun uh, Beach Boys theme kind of, you know, yep. good vibrations and it's casual, just have a great time. We're going there's people talking about bringing their kids, but it's also going to be, you Isn't know, it adults only? Because no, the alcohol? No, because nope. there were so many people saying they were mm. bringing their kids and it and it's just going to be fun. Just get out there and 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 dance and have a blast and it's going and it's multi-generational because it's just fun music and um, no one's going to get sloppy drunk or anything like that. So it's just, you know, Right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah. You don't say that around here. Cause oh. <laughs> we'll make we'll make her a liar. <laughs> we'll make her a liar. Prove her <laughs> we'll prove her wrong. I promise you. So hey. Uh, also next Thursday, tune in to Penn's Peak Radio nine to ten, where I, Chris Lukasevich, will be joining once again Bob Matthews on the Morning Lifeline from 9 to 10. I really enjoyed talking with uh, Bob Matthews. Great so guy. tune in from 9 to 10, penspeakradio.com. And for those of you who are radio aficionados, I would tell you if you had previously listened to the doc on WLSH, you'd like his style of radio rum and I don't know, he's a couple R's he throws in there. He is uh, broadcasting again. I, I know Eamon, your, your brother Pete listens to him, or at least he likes his Facebook page, Colossal Radio out of First Street in Lehighton. Just a couple uh, buildings down from where the recruiting station used to be, kind of catty corner across from the old Army Navy store. Might, that might be like 195 South First Street or something like that. And, and keep a lookout for Doc next week, because he's going to have a photo bomb, because his video camera actually projects out to the road and I went in and talked to him the other day and I said doc just to let you know I'm giving you a heads up you're gonna have a big photo bomb sometime next week so keep tuned so <laughs> feel free to live stream the doc on Colossal Radio broadcasting out of Lee Heighton you can see it there um, June 6 2019 75th anniversary of D-Day up at Penn's Peak, a big event coming up. Recognize our World War II veterans, and they are literally a dying breed, unfortunately. So this might be the last major event here in Carbon County to recognize them. Of course, we will have a 75th end of World War II uh, VE Day, VJ Day uh, uh, coming up. But Penn's Peak, June 6, 2019. Carbon remembers dday.org. Tickets are available. Twenty dollar donation. Six to seven swing time dolls. Seven fifteen. Miss Emily McManaman will sing "God Bless America." Many of you might not know Emily herself, but I know some of you know Karen Kershulik or Mr. Kershulik, who was a teacher in Jim Thorpe High School. So that would be his granddaughter, Karen's daughter. Uh, will be singing "God God Bless America." The Pennsylvania National Guard. The tag. The Adjutant General has agreed to provide a color guard for that event. And then starting at 7.30 till about 10.30, 10.45 will be showing The Longest Day. Directed by Daryl Zanuck, based on the book by Cornelius Ryan. So that's going to be a great event. So again, this is Chris Lukasevich. I want to thank you all for joining us this evening. I, we were running fast. Uh, I look forward in two weeks to re-engaging and having a conversation with Christian, Christian and uh, another invited guest who's another candidate supervisor. They'll be joining us here on, on Carbon Matters. Again, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to hear my opinions, my thoughts, uh, helping us all work together to be better informed voters yes. uh, and having this chat type of conversation that's taking place. And again, I want to emphasize the importance of tuning into the Times News, as I like to say, on Saturday uh, for this insert uh, that will be in there. Now, this is a high gloss version. Trust me, the Times News will not do the high gloss version. This is a special version that's going out to the northern tier municipalities, since they tend to read the standard speaker and not the Times News. Uh, but 7,000 
uh, residences in Carbon County will be receiving this, and I hope you're one of them yes. uh, to be receiving that. And then once this goes live here on Saturday, then I will start talking a lot more, if you haven't already heard, about my vision, return on investment, and the choice that you're going to have to make, or the choice you have to make on 21 May. So again, and finishing up, Cafe Ruiz, Ruiz Coffee USA, the official uh, coffee of C4 in Carb Matters live streaming. Uh, C4 merchandise is st still available. All you gotta do is make the contribution in person. Just come over to the, the swag, come over to the C4 headquarters. Uh, you can normally come in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 7.30 to 9.30 in the evening, or just give me a shout, drop me an email. You know, give me a reasonable donation, and you too can be wearing C4 swag, right? Showing your support. Also, mugs. I always will have a carafe or a pot of coffee on, so your first uh, cup of coffee with a donation gets you not only the mug, but the coffee to go with it. Marianne wants to know if Cafe Ruiz comes in K-Cups. No, it does not. It <laughs> yeah. used to come in little, like... Oh, with little packets. Little or packets. Like, yeah, you'd tear them off and just pour them right in. And yes, but it does not come in K-cups. No. Nope. nope. But you can buy that little insert. A little insert and put it in it. for yourself. Yep. <laughs> right. I never liked those, though. I know. All right. So, again, sorry for keeping you longer. It is 9 yeah. o'clock, 2100 hours, uh, here on 1200 block of Center Street, in Jim Thorpe, C4 Campaign headquarters. Campaign. Yep. So again, thank you guys so much. I want to do a special shout out to all those great individuals who first and foremost helped with the petition yeah, uh, solicitation signing. and signing. Extremely successful. Truly exceeded my expectations. And I met myself hundreds of wonderful people throughout Carbon County who signed the petition to get me on the ballot. I secondly want to do a special shout out to Larry, Mary Ann, and Scott who joined me last night for some yes. envelope letter stuffing, stuffing and <laughs> stuff like that. What great company. And I know at 8.45 tomorrow morning, you've got a special trip, a special mission as we start proliferating uh, C4 uh, 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 kind of from its epicenter, working our way out. So you know who you are. I look forward to seeing you. Uh, it'll be a great uh, morning of some good hard, physical labor and hard work as we tour around the company. And Chris That's is wearing his mandals. Yes, I am. All right, great. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great evening. We'll see you all in two weeks. And again, C4 Commissioner Chris Sukasevich, Republican candidate for Carbon County Commissioner. If it matters to you, it matters to me. Have a great night. Thanks, guys.